A little girl walks and sings about wanting a hundred friends when she starts school. A small black cat hears her and watches a black-haired girl who leaves everyone stunned with her beauty. When the girl stops by the cat, it runs away. It's the first day at a super fancy high school at 10. Our main character, an ugly looking guy, Tadano Hidohito, makes his entrance. He's still in shock about how the hell he got into such a prestigious school. He plans to live as background character, but his locker is next to a long-haired, classy girl's locker. He politely says hi, realizing she's cute and haughty. Instead of replying, the girl freezes and quickly leaves, making loud tapping noises. Tedano is puzzled. The name on the locker is Komi. Trying to have a peaceful school life, he takes his seat only to find the already famous and popular Komi sitting next to him, causing the entire class to curse him. The teacher asks everyone to introduce themselves, and they all seem friendly. However, when it's Komi's turn, she stands up, stares at nothing, then runs to the blackboard to write her name in beautiful kanji. After finishing, she returns to her seat, still staring with a clueless expression. Only Tadano notices this cool attitude, which makes the class admire her even more. When it's Tadano's turn, the whole class turns around, glaring at him cursing him even more, ending his peaceful school days. Despite Komi appearing classy and beautiful, when she drops her eraser and Tadano tries to return it, a ninja-like student tosses it away again. Tadano quickly places it in Komi's desk. Komi sighs and gives Tadano a deadly look before calmly vibrating. Tadano, not understanding, pretends he hasn't seen anything. During gym class, a horde of fans tries to approach Komi, knocking Tadano down. A tiny, shy voice asks why she can't talk to people anymore. Tadano wakes up in his classroom with Komi sitting on her desk next to him, holding a little cat plushie. Panicking, Tadano claims he didn't hear anything, although he is clearly terrified because he did hear her. Komi tries to run away, and Tadano, feeling desperate, blurts out if it's hard for her to talk to people. Komi turns around, giving him a deadly look, then starts shaking again. Tadano realizes she struggles with talking to people. Back in the classroom, with a big-eyed expression, Tadano asks Komi what she was trying to say, but she only shakes in fear. Tadano figures it out and suggests she communicates through the blackboard. Cute cat ears appear on Komi's head, and she starts writing, asking how he knew she couldn't communicate with people. Tadano replies he noticed because of her attitudes, and Komi reveals nobody had noticed before. Tadano, feeling at a loss for words, decides to go to the gym. Komi is not in agreement, so she grabs him by the uniform, saying Tadano is no longer free to leave. Komi admits she wasn't able to eat her lunch, and when Tadano asks if she's hungry, the cat ears come back. She then begins writing non-stop, expressing her desire to talk to people but being afraid they'll hate her and get scared. In primary school, she hated lunchtime because everyone chatted and ate together, making her feel lonely. She tried to speak, but her voice didn't come out, and no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't. She wonders what she should do, how to speak, and fears rejection. Tadano is moved by Komi, who's crying and tired from writing so much. Tadano realizes it's not difficult to talk to or get close to Komi. He offers a tissue, but she doesn't need it. Once it's gone, she continues writing, apologizing for bothering him and addressing him by his last name, which surprises him. She says she owes him an apology and finishes by writing, forget what you saw here today. Goodbye. She bows and is about to leave, but Tadano starts writing on the blackboard. The weather is nice today, huh? She simply replies, yes. Tadano tries to make Komi write more, and although she shakes, she fills the blackboard with kanji and doodles. Arrows, too. Tadano asks her about her dream, and Komi writes, to have 100 friends. Without hesitation, Tadano replies that he will be her first friend and help her find the other 99. He immediately feels embarrassed and erases it, but Komi writes, thank you, and cries tears of happiness before running away with a loud tap-tap sound. Tadano then sets his goals for his new school life to help Komi, who struggles to communicate, and make 99 friends. On the other side of the wall, Komi is still crying. Comment below guys if you also have social anxiety, because I know you also can't talk to people, because you watch too much cultural tentacles videos at nights. A new day arrives, full of wonderful opportunities. Tadano believes his task will be easy since Komi is already popular. He decides to approach Ren, a girl in their class, intending to share Komi's situation. However, when he is about to speak, Ren whispers to him that he's an ugly piece of garbage and unworthy of mentioning Komi. She asks him not to talk to her again. Like that, the new day full of opportunity end. As he's not popular, he face rejections. During the recess, he realizes he doesn't have friends either. Despite this, there is one thing he's determined to do before giving up. 
Tadano approaches a short, lilac-haired girl who cheerfully asks why he's talking to his childhood friend, Asana Najimi. Tadano introduces Najimi to Komi using feminine pronouns, and Najimi, dressed in a skirt and speaking with a high-pitched tone, takes delight in Tadano's confusion. Despite Tadano knowing that Najimi is a boy from middle school, the gender-fluid and mischievous Najimi enjoys the fun of keeping Tadano puzzled. Najimi has impressive communication skills and can befriend people within two to three minutes of meeting them. This is evident from the fact that every student at Aiden Private High School claims to be their childhood friend. When Tadano asks Najimi for a favor, they are more than willing to grant it. Prompted by Tadano, Komi attempts to ask Najimi to be friends, but she stumbles into a fit of stuttering. Tadano translates Komi's intentions to a panicking Najimi and calls in the favor. Najimi apologizes but states that they can't be friends, leaving Komi petrified. Shocked by the rejection, Tadano takes Najimi into the hallway, where Najimi recounts how Komi had rejected their attempt to become friends in elementary school. It had left Najimi bedridden with shock for a week, and since then, Komi has held the title of the only person they couldn't befriend. Tadano explains Komi's communication barriers and requests Najimi to walk home with Komi. Initially against the idea, Najimi is swayed after observing Tadano's determination to help Komi. After school, Komi and Najimi walk home together in an uncomfortable affair. Najimi tries to maintain a one-sided conversation, but from Najimi's point of view, Komi seems scary. However, Tadano, who has been discreetly following them, observes how nervous Komi is. Just as Najimi is on the verge of giving up entirely, two students with a gangster-like appearance, Ma and Shai, rush up to Najimi. These happen to be more of Najimi's childhood friends. Ma gathers the courage to ask Najimi out, but before he can finish his sentence, Najimi rejects him, revealing that they are a boy. Undeterred, Ma rips off his jacket, causing his key to fly onto the street. He forcefully grabs Najimi's arm, insisting he won't let go. Ma, with a creepy drooling expression, is interrupted when Komi grabs his shoulder to get his attention. Komi holds out the key, attempting to convey that Ma dropped it. However, due to her broken syllables, Ma misunderstands it as f*** off. Ma's imagination runs wild, picturing Komi as a Yakuza targeting guys who bother Najimi and Komi's signature stare only deepens Ma's concerns. Eventually, Ma and Shai take off. It turns out that Komi only wanted to let Ma know he dropped his key, but her broken communication made it sound different. The whole incident warms Najimi to Komi, and they decide to be friends with Komi in earnest. The next day at school, Najimi wants to eat lunch with Komi. Najimi also notices Tadano eating alone and includes him in the group. Tadano is quietly pleased, especially since his classmates have been giving him a hard time about spending time with Komi. Najimi bombards Komi with a never-ending stream of questions until she goes into overdrive. Tadano interrupts by informing Najimi about their mission to make 100 friends. Najimi, with an outrageously large network of friends, is stunned that the number is considered so little. Najimi sends Komi on an errand to Stan Bakes and asks for an exceptionally complicated order. Najimi tells Komi that they can't be friends if she doesn't go, and Komi heads out immediately. Tadano is furious, but Najimi assures him that they did it for Komi's sake, though the laughter they're holding in doesn't entirely convince Tadano. Najimi sends Tadano to discreetly follow Komi. Komi lingers outside Stan and Bakes before mustering the courage to go inside. On her first try, she heads right back out. On her second attempt, she gets to the counter and gestures vaguely. The barista points out the menu, but Komi doesn't notice the mix and match section needed for Najimi's order. The overly confident barista infers Komi's order, but he gets it totally wrong. Surprisingly, Komi takes it. Back at school, Komi gets teary-eyed, and Tadano and Najimi both try to shift the blame onto each other before dropping to the floor to apologize. Komi sulks as they continue to repent. The day unfolds in the school library, where we find Agari Himiko, a girl whose nerves bubble up when in the company of others, leaving her in a state of temporary paralysis when she feels prying eyes upon her. Unfortunately, today is one of those days, thanks to Komi, who is subtly observing her from behind a bookshelf. Himiko is no different from her fellow classmates, as she has placed Komi on such a towering pedestal that even with binoculars, you'd struggle to catch a glimpse. In contrast, Himiko tends to undervalue herself. To evade Komi's watchful gaze, she takes refuge in her favorite escape spot, a library restroom, her sanctuary. However, tranquility is but a fleeting moment, for lo, and behold, Komi is right outside. Komi's only concern is checking on Himiko's well-being, but Himiko is more terrified than a cat in front of dog. 
Emiko cautiously emerges from her refuge, but soon she's intercepted by their homeroom teacher. The teacher has a simple request, announcing that P.E. will be in the gym. Emiko, typically shy, hesitates. However, when she spots Komi again, she's suddenly inspired to make a swift exit. But the teacher's request ties Himiko's stomach into knots, and she attempts to muster some courage with a pep talk as she approaches the class. Unfortunately, her eloquence vanishes, and all she can manage is a single terrified noise. The class starts to stare at Himiko, feeling the heat, she retreats. However, there's Komi, who seems to be the grandmaster of intimidating looks, with Komi's icy gaze. Himiko finally blurts out the teacher's message and flees. But deep down, she's relieved to have conveyed the message. Tedano, who's been watching this unfold, can't help but wonder what just happened. Komi writes a note to Tedano, explaining what happened 20 minutes earlier. Najimi made a list of students, and the first name on the list was Himiko. Komi felt a connection with Himiko, so she immediately went to the library. But getting close to Himiko was still a challenge she couldn't overcome. Komi and Tedano think about the mix-up when Himiko shows up. Himiko shares that even though Komi scared her, it was a meaningful experience. Seizing the moment, Tadano suggests that Komi and Himiko could be friends, but Himiko is too scared for that. Instead, she suggests something less intimidating. She wants to be Komi's dog. The next day, Komi proudly shows off her new mobile phone. She scribbles a message to Tadano, expressing her desire to collect her friend's numbers. However, Tadano misinterprets this, thinking she wants his number immediately. He embarks on a quest to find Najimi and Himiko while Komi, wanting to be more self-reliant, stops Tadano, emphasizing that she'll find Najimi herself. Komi then presents Najimi with a piece of paper, seemingly intent on acquiring their number. Najimi is initially baffled as to why Komi doesn't want them to directly input their number into the phone. Then it dawns on them about Komi's true intentions. Komi then attempts to obtain Himiko's number, but Himiko's masochistic tendencies lead her down to wrong turns. Komi abandons that endeavor quickly. Komi hands her phone to Tadano, but just as he's about to put in his number, Himiko shows up with a clear understanding. She reveals that Najimi filled her in about Komi's plan to have Tadano share his number first, leading to blushing moments for both Komi and Tadano as he shares his contact info. Later, during a class election, Komi's quick nomination for president is interrupted by Najimi, who convinces everyone that Komi is above such roles and should be called a goddess instead. Tadano ends up accidentally elected as president, and Najimi becomes the vice president. That evening, Komi is at home playing with her phone when she accidentally dials Tadano. She quickly hangs up just as he answers. Recognizing the accidental call, Tadano calls her back and asks her to make a sound if everything's okay. To his surprise, Komi responds with a shaky voice. She even tries to make a joke before apologizing for the unintended call, a small yet significant step for her. They end the call with Tadano appreciating the beauty of Komi's voice, while Komi celebrates her first phone conversation. The next day at school, the popular group starts a clapping game. Komi wants to join, so she encourages Tadano to come up with a plan to make it happen. After school, Najimi, a popular group member, overhears and calls Komi over to challenge her beyond her comfort zone. The popular kids really admire Komi, so Tadano joins in to make sure she feels comfortable. Even though the other popular kids aren't thrilled, Najimi simplifies the game, and Komi ends up winning. The game changes again when Najimi adds a penalty for the loser, they have to make a kissy face. Komi's admirers take this challenge seriously, trying hard to make her lose. Tadano purposely messes up his turn, feeling embarrassed. Despite the awkward moment, Tadano feels better when Komi thanks him for making the day fun. It's the physical exam day. And unbeknownst to Komi, a fellow student named Yadano Makaru has turned the whole affair into a rather one-sided competition. Makaru is on a mission to outperform Komi in three out of four physical exam components. However, Makaru's ambitious plan doesn't go entirely as she hoped. She only manages to triumph in two components, leaving them tied. Yet, instead of despair, Makaru experiences an epiphany. She realizes that the concept of ideal body measurements is, in reality, unfair. Following day, where Tadano was enjoying a pleasant morning walk to school, everything seems serene until an unexpected dark presence sneaks up behind him. Before we can unravel Tadano's fate, our attention shifts to Ren, another student on her way to school. As she walks, she grapples with what she casually refers to as a small crush on Komi. However, it quickly becomes evident that her sentiments go far beyond a mere crush, verging on a full-blown obsession. Determined to befriend Komi, Ren's efforts to initiate conversation with her are unintentionally thwarted when Himiko and Najimi greet Komi with a cheerful good morning. 
Ren leverages her friendship with Najimi to create an opportunity for herself. When she finally manages to say good morning to Komi, she's met with Komi's characteristic silence, further fueling her perception of Komi as an untouchable goddess. Our story takes a darker turn when Ren leads Najimi into a dimly lit corridor, using a thinly veiled disguise as a favor to get Najimi to introduce her to Komi. The introduction finally happens in the classroom, but Komi remains silent, leaving Ren spiraling deeper into her obsession and yearning for physical contact with Komi. The narrator takes a rather tender turn when Ren occupies Tadano's vacant desk, inviting Komi to share her bento for lunch. In this moment, we glimpse Komi's vivid imagination of Tadano silently cheering her on. A flicker of tenderness is felt until Ren begins to enthusiastically celebrate her apparent victory. Meanwhile, we return to Tadano's predicament, which has taken a dire turn. He's tightly bound with his mouth hick shut in Ren's unsettling bedroom. The walls and ceiling are adorned with pictures of Komi alongside unsettling images of the clock on the wall reminds us that it's already 10.40 am. Hop to three hours later after the school's lunch break. Najimi boldly invites herself and Komi over to Ren's house, setting the stage for an unexpected twist. Time jumps again, now marking 4.36 pm in Ren's room. Tadano grapples with waiting and hope when he hears Ren's return. Ren instructs Komi and Najimi to wait while she enters her room alone to remove the pictures and prepare to hide Tadano in a closet, with the unsettling promise of burying him in the mountains. As Tadano helplessly bangs against the closet door, Ren dismisses it as mere noise from her neighbor. She departs to fetch tea, cautioning a concerned Komi and Najimi not to open the closet. However, Najimi has other plans, promptly opening the closet door to reveal Tadano's presence. Just as the tension reaches its peak, Ren returns wielding a pair of shark chopsticks. She assures Komi that there's nothing to worry about and attempts to rationalize her actions as necessary to remove Tadano from the equation. Ren embarks on a character assassination mission, targeting Tadano before showering Komi with compliments, striving to persuade Komi that Tadano is unworthy of her friendship. In response, Komi shakes her head with a sigh and, aided by her notebook, conveys her discomfort with Ren's actions. The three friends try to escape, but Yamai stops Komi, claiming it's all for Komi's sake. Komi, using her notebook, asserts her authority to choose friends and walks out with Tadano following closely. This leaves Ren in disbelief, thinking Komi now despises her and won't talk to her. Ren grapples with her emotions, and Najimi, flattened against the wall, silently screams for Tadano, left behind. The next day, Komi uses her notebook to express responsibility for Tadano's situation. She wonders if they should stay friends due to potential risks. Tadano, recalling Komi's earlier sentiment, says he decides his friends. Despite cringing internally and using Komi's words against her, Tadano seeks clarification. Komi takes a remarkable step, speaking to him in person for the first time, expressing her desire to maintain their friendship. The narrative takes a surprising twist as Najimi intervenes, bringing Ren along to apologize. Though the apology is far from straightforward, Ren concedes her own selfishness. Komi, using her notebook, accepts the apology, leaving Ren deeply affected and misinterpreting it as a deliberate act of silence. However, they eventually manage to clarify Komi's communication disorder to Ren. The story takes a hopeful turn when Ren, learning about Komi's goal to make 100 friends, expresses her desire to be one of them. Initially President Komi, with a simple note, marks the beginning of their friendship. After the ending song, an amusing yet slightly menacing note emerges when Ren playfully threatens to bury him alive if he dares to touch Komi. It becomes apparent that her obsession is far from fading away. Summer has arrived, bringing a change in the season's wardrobe, including Komi's summer uniform. Naturally, her new attire attracts even more attention from her classmates. The school schedule announces a fitness test, an event that gives Makaru yet another opportunity to engage in friendly competition with our oblivious hero, Komi. Despite Makaru's efforts resulting in a string of uninterrupted losses during a sprint test, Komi's stamina capabilities elicit a transformation in Makaru's one-sided rivalry, infusing it with admiration. One Sunday afternoon, Najimi and Tadano embark on a visit to Komi's residence. Upon reaching their destination, they are warmly welcomed by Komi's mother, who enthusiastically greets Komi's friends. She playfully introduces herself as an eternal 17-year-old at heart, leaving Tadano and Najimi utterly flabbergasted. Meanwhile, Komi squirms in mortification. Komi leads Tadano and Najimi to her room, where an awkward silence momentarily reigns supreme. Thankfully, Komi's mother dispels this unsettling quietude by appearing with afternoon tea. 
Najimi, being Najimi, decides to stir the pot a bit by pretending to need a visit to the restroom. A sly scheme to observe the interaction between Tadano and Komi, who are left alone in Komi's room. However, their well-intentioned meddling comes to naught as Tadano and Komi comfortably coexist in companionable silence for a good 15 minutes. This peaceful coexistence continues until Najimi can no longer bear the suspense. Despite the successful visit that extends into the evening, Komi still yearns for more. She grumbles in disappointment until she receives a message from Najimi featuring the secret photo taken to commemorate their enjoyable afternoon. On the next school day during break time, Komi is approached by Nakanaka Amoharu, who addresses her as Princess Chemilia and regales her with fantastical tales of reincarnation and contracts. Intrigued by Amoharu's otherworldly claims, Komi seeks an explanation. However, the task leaves Amoharu feeling somewhat bashful, causing her to dodge the question by ambiguously requesting a contract once more. When Komi doesn't immediately respond, Amoharu concocts a whimsical excuse and dashes off into her vivid imagination. Tadano, ever the astute observer, deduces that the contract was Amoharu's unconventional way of extending a hand in friendship. Meanwhile, Najimi finds humor in Amoharu's behavior, likening her to a younger version of Tadano. We're treated to a flashback of Tadano's middle school days, specifically his second year, during which he strutted about with an inflated sense of self-importance. This delusional episode culminated in a grand declaration of love, an endeavor that resulted in Tadano's unceremonious rejection by the object of his affection. This soul-crushing event marked a turning point in Tadano's life, compelling him to embrace normality and transform into the Tadano we know today. Back in the present, PE class unfolds with everyone vying to be Komi's partner. However, Amoharu finds herself standing alone, a predicament that triggers an elaborate display of indifference masking inner despair. Yet, a surprising twist transpires as Komi steps forward to become Amoharu's partner, breaking the isolation. Following a partner stretch, Amoharu is overwhelmed by gratitude but fumbles to articulate her feelings. Instead, she retreats into her Chunabio persona. After school, in a playful turn of events, Najimi makes off with Tadano's umbrella, leaving behind a teasing note. Komi, who decided to share her umbrella with him, walks home with Tidano. During a quick convenience store pit stop, Tadano inquires if Komi noticed Najimi's note and waited for him. Blushing, Komi responds, choosing silence as her answer. Komi is on a mission to refine her communication skills, and she's enlisted Tadano as her joke tester. Unfortunately, her arsenal of jokes is a treasure trove of ugly jokes that barely coax a chuckle from Tadano. Najimi's got a grand plan to hit them all after school, inviting Komi, Tadano, and Himiko to join in on the shopping spree. Little do they know, Ren's got her detective hat on, eavesdropping on their plans and orchestrating a timely meetup. She corners Komi with fashion inquiries, but Komi, whose wardrobe has been curated, is fashion oblivious. Najimi senses an opportunity for a fun game and unleashes a shopping challenge. Each member of the group must pick an outfit for Komi within a 10,000 yen budget, and the ensemble with the highest rating wins. Tadano is not too confident in his choice, a simple white dress. To his surprise, the whole gang loves it, and Komi's social media post garners flying scores across the board. Later on, Komi decides it's time for a haircut at her regular salon. She encounters a newbie assistant, Arai Komiko, who is determined to shine. After a bit of uncertainty at the entrance, experienced hairstylist Karisu Maki recognizes Komi and invites her in. Maki instinctively gives Komi her usual haircut without needing many words. Kamiko, handling the shampoo, tries to chat with Komi, who responds by pointing to words in magazines. Kamiko worries if she's not providing good customer service. At the payment counter, Komi uses a magazine to express her gratitude to Kamiko. As leaves, she frets that Komi might not like her. Maki explains that salons can be overwhelming sometimes. Tadano is the only one to notice Komi's trimmed hair the next day. That night, Komi lies in bed, reflecting on her interactions, especially with Tadano, before peacefully falling asleep. The exam season arrives at the school, and Najimi proposes a collaborative library session with Komi and Tadano. The library, however, is governed by the strict senior student Gorami who enforces silence with a colossal paper fan. Najimi becomes the first victim of Gorami's disciplinary measures. While Komi and Tadano focus on their studies, Najimi abandons academic endeavors for a good book, inviting Gorami's ire once again. Despite the challenges, they introduce a game of Jenga, and Komi enthusiastically joins. Tadano is cautious under Gorami's watchful eye, but Najimi unintentionally topples the Jenga tower, 
leading to more fan-assisted fury and Goromi escorting Najimi away. Nevertheless, Komi cherishes the experience of getting into a bit of trouble. The exams come and go, with Komi scoring consistently in the 90s, Najimi performing admirably despite their aversion to studying, and Tadano finding himself right in line with the class average. After some time, summer break arrives, and Komi and Tadano complete their summer homework early. They both grapple with the idea of inviting each other to hang out. After much internal debate, Komi decides to take the plunge and calls Tadano. However, Tadano's startled hesitation leaves her hanging. Fortunately, Najimi steps in to save the day by extending an invitation for all of them to hit the pool. As Komi gets ready, she checks her bag many times, and her mother ensures she's not forgetting anything before she leaves. An anxious Komi arrives at the station half an hour early. When Najimi and Tadano show up an hour later, Najimi points out that Komi is wearing the dress Tadano picked for her. Tadano, out of breath, tells her she looks pretty, and Komi shyly blushes. While walking to their destination, Najimi admits she invited Agari. However, Ren and the gang also show up. Najimi agrees to go together, but Komi feels the stress increasing with more people. Najimi and Komi start walking to the girls' dressing room, but Tadano stops them and asks Najimi where she is going. What do you mean by that? Once at the lockers, Ren suspiciously waits for Komi to get dressed, recalling all the times she tried to spy on her in her bedroom. However, to her dismay, Komi takes out the school swimsuit. Ren grabs her arm, insisting they go buy a swimsuit as she doesn't want others to see her dorky side. The guys are waiting at the pool, and Najimi is the first to arrive, looking super cute and earning 10 points from the guys. Agari also receives 10 points, and the rest of the girls get rated. When Komi arrives, everyone turns their heads to look at her, and the guys give her 100 million points. They decide to start with the water slides. Najimi goes with Agari, ready to be a good cushion if needed. While everyone is fighting to see who goes with Komi, the employee calls Tadano to join Komi since they're taking too long, causing some growls from the others. While sliding, Tadano can hardly see what's in front of them due to Komi's hair, but he finds it quite enjoyable. Once they land, Komi is on the floor shaking and Tadano quickly understands she wants to go again, four more times to be precise. Afterward, they put Komi on an inflatable donut and carry her around. Najimi then proposes a contest to see who can hold their breath underwater the longest, and the loser has to buy soda. They all go underwater until they see Komi with her eyes closed, trying her best. They all lose their breath and resurface at the same time, so Komi gets nine cans of soda. Tadano looks at Komi gently drinking some soda, and a smile appears on his face. She's having a time of her life. Najimi suggests trying different games and runs, followed by Komi. Unfortunately, she falls and injures her knee. While her friends suggest going home, Komi doesn't want to, so Najimi quickly decides they'll keep playing around. Najimi explains that it's better this way, as Komi might think she's ruining the day for everybody. They decide to stay. Later, Komi is sitting and watching people have fun with Tadano by her side, as he's tired and wants to take a break. Komi shares that she had a great time but feels like she ruined it for everybody. Tadano stands up, splashes water on her face, and offers his hand, stating that if she's sad, nobody will be able to have fun anymore. Tadano walks in the shallow part of the pool, holding Komi's hand until he realizes and lets it go in panic. Najimi then arrives with water guns, and a water war begins. On the train going back home, Najimi and Tadano are happy that everyone had fun. Komi falls asleep, and Ren seems to be falling asleep on her shoulder, or so it appears, as she's awake and drooling with fantasies on Komi's shoulder. On another day, Komi has to go to the library, and her father walks her there. They don't talk much, creating a mystery for Komi's mom about how they communicate. They stop by a cafe and order shaved ice, drawing the attention of people around them. Komi gets a brain freeze, and her father offers her a warm drink. Gathering the courage to ask about school, Komi smiles, and her father pats her head. He then tries the shaved ice and also gets a brain freeze, but Komi offers him a warm beverage, making him really happy. Once at the library, Komi finds a book she likes, The Grove of Goats and Iron, and starts reading. She calls everyone's attention with her graceful gesture, quickly goes to the checkout desk, and sits down to read her book to calm down. However, a baby starts crying by her side, startling her even more. In an effort to help the baby calm down, she grabs her own cheeks to put a smile on her face, and the baby stops crying. The mom leaves wondering what happened, and the baby says bye-bye with his hand to Komi, 
who returns the gesture. Tedano, looking at her from between some shelves, witnesses this precious moment but forgets to return the books as he leaves. On the way back home, Komi spots a park and decides to have some fun. She starts by swinging on the swings, finding it enjoyable. Next, she goes down the slide, thoroughly enjoying the experience. Feeling a bit adventurous, she climbs a jungle gym but realizes it's too high, so she explores other play structures and games. After playing around and getting tired, she spots a drinking fountain and takes a refreshing sip of water. Meanwhile, Tadano, with his bicycle, is heading to the library to return the books. As he passes by the park, he sees Komi enjoying herself and drinking water. Once again, he witnesses a precious moment, but, true to his forgetful nature, he once again forgets to return the books. After some time, Komi's family is on a trip, and during the car ride, Komi's mom speaks on behalf of everyone. They make a stop at the graveyard to offer prayers to their ancestors. Eventually, they reach Yuiko's house. There, they meet Ryako, Shuko's sister, and her husband Sadeyoshi. When her aunt sees Shuko, she is amazed by how pretty she has become. Ryako also mentions that her daughter, Akira, is present. However, since it's been a long time since they've seen each other, Akira feels shy. Komi approaches her, but her stoic appearance scares Akira. Not sure what to do, Komi decides to tickle her, which surprisingly works. After bonding a bit more around the house, Akira gathers the courage to ask Komi to play a board game with her. Komi nods in agreement, and this simple interaction brings tears of happiness to Akira, who had never dared to approach Komi before thinking that Komi would just sit silently. When Akira and Komi are playing, Shuko suggests that her daughter seek advice from her grandmother, following a Komi family tradition. Learning that Komi has made friends, Yuiko smiles with relief and affectionately caresses her granddaughter's hair. However, the conversation takes an unexpected turn when Yuiko inquires about whether Komi has a crush on a boy, specifically asking about Tadano, causing Komi to panic. Najimi invites Tadano to the summer festival and asks him to wear a yukata. While waiting, Komi arrives in a beautiful purple yukata. She immediately starts shaking, fearing the yukata might not suit her, but Tadano quickly reassures her, saying she looks very good. Najimi appears with a group of friends, forming a sort of army, all responding to her festival invitation. As Tadano and Komi are about to join the group, Komi attempts to say something but starts shaking and can only mumble. Tadano realizes she's nervous because she forgot her notebook but assures her not to worry since he'll be with her. Encouraged by Tadano's support, Komi decides not to worry too much. While walking around, Tadano realizes they're alone and suggests trying the target practice game. However, he misses all of his shots due to stress, knowing that Komi is watching. Komi is about to give it a try when Makaru appears, challenging her. Despite losing, Makaru claims it's a tie and leaves. Najimi comes out of nowhere and invites them to play Candy Cutout. As Najimi loses around 15 times, Komi plays the game softly and slyly, cutting the candy a lot faster when she notices Tadano's gaze, she surprises Najimi, leaves to get something to eat. Tadano, concerned that Komi might not be having fun due to her odd behavior, is reassured when Komi finally says that Tadano also looks good. He realizes that's what she had been trying to say, making him unbelievably happy. Ren and the gang also show up uninvited, and they go to the rope lottery. Tedano and others get fooled by the old lady's tricks, unable to win the main prize. However, Komi, completely unaware of the old lady's tricks, chooses the right rope and wins the prize. Later on, they try catching koi fishes when Amoharu appears and challenges Komi. Amoharu leaves victorious, though she only wins a pity prize. Ren then arrives, offering Komi a sausage, what the f**k she want. But Najimi interrupts and eats it before Komi can. While stopping to look at a glass art stand, Komi loses the group and panics. However, Tadano is there waiting for her. They sit down and message Najimi to meet them again. Tadano points out that he's happy Komi is having fun with everyone, and Komi writes on the dirt with a branch. It was fun with just the two of us as well. As soon as Tadano looks at the floor, Komi blushes and erases it. Najimi then arrives, interrupting the ambience, and Komi looks at the dirt with a hint of sadness. Summer is about to end, and Komi goes to Tadano's house. Najimi opens the door, and Ren also shows up uninvited. Najimi explains they'll be in Tadano and his sister's room. Tadano's sister, Hitomi, introduces herself and immediately notices Komi is shaking, blaming her brother for that. Najimi then announces they have an important mission, to help them finish their homework, as they haven't done a single thing all summer. Tadano admits he hasn't finished either, so they all start studying. While studying, they reminisce about how fun the summer was, and Komi writes that she had never wanted summer break to end, making everybody emotional. 
The first day of school after summer break has finally arrived, and all the students are heading to school in a somewhat gloomy procession. Among them is Inaka Nakoko, a brown short-haired girl with freckles who harbors a secret. She is country girl. She's been struggling, especially in the first semester, as she wore a really long skirt. However, things are different for the fall semester as she's opted for a much shorter skirt, though still longer than others. When Inaka sees Komi, the goddess of her class, she starts fantasizing about how awesome it would be to be a city girl like her. Meanwhile, Najimi is complaining because she forgot her lunch. She asks Komi to go pick her a sandwich from Savoy, giving her detailed directions for the perfect sandwich. Inaka overhears this and decides that following Komi might help her learn how to be a city girl. Tedano, who's also following Komi to make sure she's okay, notices Inaka but stays hidden. Inaka is amazed by how calm and elegant Komi appears, not realizing that Komi is actually nervous and shaking. Already inside the shop, both girls are a bit terrified by the competent-looking people. An employee offers to take Komi's order, but Komi leaves, leaving Inaka in awe. Seeing Komi's hair blowing in the wind, Inaka thinks she's just following her own pace and style, making her even cooler. Komi goes back in and starts ordering by pointing at the sandwich. However, the employee asks too many questions about the kind of bread, sauces, and vegetables. Inaka is in a panic, but she approaches to observe calm, serious, and classy Komi. The employee is dazzled by Komi's beauty and decides to get her the staff recommendation. Komi finally leaves with her sandwich, and Inaka, who had been a silent observer, is now a lifetime fan of Komi. Inspired, Inaka gathers the courage to go inside and successfully places her own order, when Najimi takes a bite of her sandwich and realizes it's not what she ordered. Later, while reading Komi gets a surprise invite from Nakanaka and decides to go. Nakanaka is amazed that Komi actually came but isn't sure what to do. To break the ice, Nakanaka introduces Komi to her favorite video game. Komi, being new to gaming, sits in amazement. Fearing that Komi might leave, Nakanaka calls Najimi and Tadano for help. With Najimi's arrival, they decide to play a fighting game. As Nakanaka and Najimi get intensely competitive, Komi, still a novice, falls into a swamp. Tadano comes to her rescue, leading to a playful mud incident that eventually helps Nakanaka win the game. Days later, Najimi calls Komi for help at work, distributing tissues. Komi struggles to communicate verbally, making it challenging to convince people to take the samples. Feeling disheartened, Komi is uplifted when she notices someone else in a bear costume also distributing tissues. However, she faces more rejections until a woman in need of tissues, but hesitant to ask spots Komi. Seeing a potential customer, Komi offers tissues, and soon a line forms as people realize she's distributing samples. Despite the initial difficulties, Komi successfully completes the task, bringing joy to her and Tadano, who's been enduring the heat in the bear costume. Later, Tadano and Komi arrive early, but Komi notices a strange spot on Tadano's face. She panics, unsure whether to tell him, even shedding a few tears. Najimi arrives with the same spot, followed by Agari, Ren, Nakanaka, and everyone else. Komi wakes up, realizing it was just a nightmare. The next day, Tadano arrives early, and Komi sees the same spot on his face for real. After some interaction with Najimi, Komi gathers the courage to ask Tadano to call her by her name since they're friends. Tadano hesitates, feeling it might not be polite, so Najimi suggests calling Komi Shauko. Even then, Tadano struggles to address her more casually. Najimi encourages Komi to call others by their names, but Komi finds it challenging. In the end, Najimi casually points out that Tadano had a sesame seed on his face all day. Now, it's summer festival time, and Najimi is thrilled to have a break from studying. As they prepare, they meet Natsuno Chika, a sporty red-haired girl with a unique ability to detect body heat. Chika warns Komi that she seems too cold to win. Ren, watching the events, cheers the class to win for their goddess Komi. The tournament is divided by classes, and there's a prize at the end. The principal serves as the ultimate judge. The first event, warming up, is won by Komi. However, they lose the tug of war as some classmates faint, overwhelmed by having Komi close by. It's announced that all classes will compete against each other, regardless of age. The next event is an obstacle race where participants can earn extra points for aesthetics and effort. Agari impresses earning points for her two big aesthetics. Nakanaka, despite exhaustion, pushes herself to continue, driven by her determination to do it for Komi. Now, it's Tadano's turn to run, and all the girls cheer for him, except for Komi. Najimi notices this and encourages Komi to cheer for Tadano as well. 
Tedano, not being particularly athletic, falls during the race. Feeling defeated, he hears Komi whispering, please give your best, acting as a power-up that helps him secure third place. Suddenly, it starts pouring rain and Komi's mom shows up, becoming the center of attention as everyone thinks Komi will be like her when she grows up. However, Komi feels ashamed and states that her friends are good boys. Once she leaves, the sun shines again as if she had caused the rain. They continue playing different games until the final event, the relay race. The winner of the relay race achieves the long-desired victory. Chika approaches Komi to warn her, predicting her loss. Chika and Komi start running at the same speed, but when Komi is about to surpass Chika, she falls into the mud. Undeterred, Komi stands up again, and seeing the entire class cheering for her, she runs as fast as she can and secures the second place after Chika. Chika admits she was wrong about Komi, offers an apology, but is unable to extend her hand as the entire class surrounds Komi with care. Witnessing the depth of love for Komi brings tears to Chika's eyes. In the end, Komi receives recognition for her efforts on behalf of the class. One day, Tadano finds himself overwhelmed with homework and favors that everyone has been asking him for. Najimi offers to help, but Nene redirects them to do something else. Komi expresses her desire to help Tadano, but Nene insists that it's unnecessary. As Nene and Tadano walk together, she jokingly asks if he's a masochist for taking on so much work and continuing to pursue Komi even though it seems challenging. Tadano explains that Komi is a wonderful person and a precious friend to him, believing that she will understand once they get to know each other. Observing this conversation, Komi becomes visibly jealous. Nene tries to talk to her, but it's too late and Komi runs away. Later, Tadano finds himself buried in work once again and offers to help. Upon learning about it, Tadano informs Komi that she can go, as he'll be leaving later. Disheartened, Komi swiftly collects her things and departs. Before long, she returns, expressing her desire to assist, and Tadano agrees, bringing joy to Komi. Nene quickly grasps the situation and chooses to leave, giving the lovebirds some space. The next day, Nene hugs both Tadano and Komi. Komi apologizes for running away the previous day, and... Nene assures her that there's no need to worry, she's not taking Tadano away. She playfully wishes them well, leaving Komi blushing and running away. When Tadano asks about it, Nene simply says it's a secret between friends. Later, Komi expresses her desire to go to a photo booth to take pictures. Najimi and Ren overhear this and enthusiastically decide to join her. They have a great time taking numerous pictures with various effects, including making Komi's eyelashes look extra long which leads to laughter. As they are leaving, Tadano notices Komi's interest in gacha machines that have kitten key rings. On another day at school, Tadano surprises Komi with a kitten key ring. However, Komi reveals that she already has one from when she went with Najimi. Despite this, they decide to exchange key rings, hastily hiding the action as Najimi approaches. The cultural festival is approaching and various eccentric ideas are proposed for the class's participation. Najimi suggests a maid cafe, Nakanaka wants to form a rock band, Ren pitches a haunted house, and many other bizarre ideas come up. The class decides to vote on the proposals, and Tedano asks Komi for her preference. She votes for the maid cafe, leading the entire class to choose that option. The preparations for the maid cafe begin with Komi expressing her desire to help, but as the class goddess, she is obligated to sit on her throne. Autori Kid, a very distracted girl from their class, is tasked with picking up materials for the festival, but she's asked to bring someone along. She approaches Komi, but Komi starts shaking and is unable to reply. Nene offers to accompany them, and the trio, Autori, Nene, and Komi head to the shop. Nene suggests splitting up to find the materials faster, but she decides against it, opting to stay together. They find the wood they need, but when they turn around, Autori is missing. Komi searches for her and discovers her about to enter a prohibited area. In response, Komi grabs her and begins searching for Nene. Autori is the second person to notice that Komi can't talk. Komi writes and asks why Autori chose to accompany her. Autori explains that upon witnessing Komi's close friendship with Tadano and Najimi, she also wanted to befriend her. Komi gestures to write, and when she stands up, Autori is nowhere to be seen again. This time, Komi finds her handling a chainsaw. As they walk back, Autori expresses her happiness about becoming friends with Komi. Autori smiles, stating they'll do an excellent job for the festival. To everyone's surprise, Komi responds with her voice saying yes. Tadano, observing through the window, is pleased to see Komi becoming more self-dependent. 
Another day arrives, and they need to distribute pamphlets. Najimi explains the process, and Komi decides to give it a try. She enters a shop, but due to her difficulty expressing herself, she ends up confusing the owner. Komi leaves the shop with a pamphlet in her hand but a full stomach. Tadano suggests going to familiar places, making it easier for them. Komi finally manages to distribute her pamphlets. There's only one left, and they knock on a door. It turns out to be the same baby that Komi made laugh at the library. She succeeds again, bringing joy to the baby. Back at school, the entire class is exhausted and acting like zombies, but the gang arrives with rice balls, and everyone seems to come back to life. They all want to try Komi's rice ball, but they get mixed up. By chance, Tadano grabs one made by Komi, making her blush. Nene seizes the opportunity to tease them. Finally, the festival arrives, and Komi feels embarrassed because her skirt is too short. Najimi claims there's no alternative, forcing Komi to wear that one. An expert on maid cafes, more like an otaku, is set to attend the festival. This self-proclaimed expert is delighted to see many stereotypical maids until Komi appears. The expert thinks Komi is upset with him for staring too much, so he quickly finishes his meal and leaves. Komi wants to say goodbye but is unable to, so Najimi teaches her. In the end, the otaku, now understanding that Komi is just cuter, bids a farewell. Najimi is not satisfied with the maid cafe and wants more excitement. They decide to cross-dress Tadano, making him wear a uniform and a pink wig, much to Komi's delight. However, Komi's mom appears and Tadano has to attend to her, feeling deeply embarrassed. Shousuk also attends, seeming uninterested, and eventually leaves. Hitomi, Tadano's sister, arrives just in time to take a picture of her cross-dressed brother and sends it to their mom. During their break, Komi and Tadano discuss how well things went. Komi writes down that Tadano looks really cute, making him blush, which, in turn, makes her blush too. The maid cafe is a huge success, but there are too many customers waiting. Najimi sends Komi outside to disperse the crowd, and Najimi takes advantage of the situation by making people pay for different things, like taking pictures with the maids or getting hit by Komi. The principal finds out and forces Najimi to give back all the money. Tired from the hard work, Najimi proposes going for a walk. They visit the haunted house, where Komi is terrified, even though the girls didn't dare to scare her. Afterward, they go to the confession event, where they stand on top of a building and yell the truth. Ren is there and screams her confession to Komi. Najimi pushes Komi to do it too to promote the cafe. When the crowd sees Komi, they go crazy, and even though Komi only says, the people are delighted, almost making Komi faint. Finally, Najimi is taken to receive some meditation to calm down a bit. Komi walks around wearing glasses, and Tadano tells her she looks very pretty, making her blush. Nene appears and takes Komi to explore the rest of the festival, and they have lots of fun. At the end of the day, they go to see a band playing. The maid cafe wins the event, but thanks to Najimi's involvement, they don't receive the prize. To end the festival, soft music starts playing, and people begin to dance. Komi wants to dance with Tadano, but neither of them knows how to dance. To make things worse, Najimi steps in and dances with them, along with Ren and others, ruining the dance. Outside the school, they decide to go to a karaoke. Komi is nervous because she can't sing, but Tadano reassures her. Najimi insists she sings. Later, Najimi sings with Ren, and Nakanaka's performance is impressive. When it's Komi's turn, she doesn't sing, but the usual admirers insist they heard something. When it's Tadano's turn, he sings with emotion, and Komi is the only one paying attention, encouraging him. At her house, Komi picks up her notebook and jots down the names of all the friends she's made until now. A few days after the karaoke in the school festival, Komi wakes up to her phone alarm. Najimi is bombarding her with messages, reminding her to update her blog. Later, as she heads to school, Najimi playfully gives her a chilly hand. Tadano also greets her and receives the same cold treatment from Komi. During the introductions, they go through all the students, and we get our first look at Cat Eye. Najimi asks for the class blog and instructs everyone to add their names. It starts with Tadano, followed by Agari, Ren, Makaru, Nakanaka, Onigashima, Kishi, The Simp Group, Nene, and Atori. With 87 people still missing, Komi feels a bit down. Suddenly, the focus shifts to Cat Eye, Makoto, a tough-looking guy who struggles with taking the initiative. He had fallen ill on the first day of school and felt too embarrassed to return. Once passed without his presence, and he mentions that he used to be thin. During his time away from school, he worked out and even dyed his hair to distance himself from bullies. Cat Eye, with a smile, couldn't find his assigned seat and decided to wait at the back. 
However, he didn't realize that people were staring at him as if he were a delinquent due to his intimidating appearance. Tadano was the only one who had a hunch that he might be like Komi. Najimi, who already knew him, tells Katai that he has changed a lot, and Katai takes him outside to keep his past private. Soon, all the students start crowding around to save Komi from him, and Katai approaches to see what's going on. The class delinquents try to defend her, but Katai accidentally bumps into one of them and, with a dry throat, says something that the others interpret as a threat, causing them to back down. Katai notices Komi looking at him kindly and trembling, which he finds unusual since no one had ever gazed at him like that for so long. Feeling uneasy, his legs give way, and the two remain in an awkward silence. Tadano interrupts, offering to show Katai around since he missed a lot of school. Katai behaves well with him, appreciating his first friend. He soon realizes that Komi, by encouraging him to speak with her stare, must be a communication master. The next day, Najimi appears excited as winter approaches with many beautiful events. Tadano reminds everyone about the upcoming finals, suggesting they all study at Nakanaka's house, which she agrees to. However, they later run into Ren, who wasn't invited. Instead of studying, Ren and Nakanaka start their usual argument to see who Komi likes more, tossing around labels like otaku and dark and basic and girly. When asked about her preference, Komi diplomatically says she loves both. Unhappy with this answer, they decide to settle it with a game, opting for an intense Mario Kart match. Surprisingly, Najimi emerges as the winner, and they even tie in their mock exams. In the actual exam, the teacher instructs them not to pick up anything from the floor without notifying her. Komi accidentally drops one of her pencils and breaks the tip of the other. Unable to speak, she attempts to signal the teacher. Tadano, intentionally involved in this, drops her pencil, drawing the teacher's attention since Komi was the only one using a pencil. Initially fine, Tadano then realizes he doesn't have an eraser either. Witnessing this, Komi breaks her eraser and they reenact the scenario. Tadano thanks her and both feel a sense of embarrassment. Back at home, Hitomi requests her brother's eraser, but he refuses, stating that the eraser has now become a holy relic. The next day, Komi heads to school, but a powerful storm begins. When she arrives, her mother informs her that classes are cancelled. Secretly, Komi actually wanted to skip class, she enjoys this kind of weather. However, a lightning strike causes a power outage on her street, and Komi becomes scared. Her mother comes to her, and Komi stays close to her. Her mother leaves for a moment to check the circuit breaker with Shaosuk. Suddenly, Tadano calls her to check on her well-being after seeing the news about her street. Although Komi sounds frightened, she asks Tadano not to hang up and chat a little more. Her mother watches from the door, delighted to see her daughter engaging in a conversation. Just then, the rain stops and the sun comes out. Later, they decide to head to school since the weather has returned to normal. At school, Ren is eager to catch a glimpse of Komi and her she comes up with an idea to play outside near a puddle and invites Komi, who innocently accepts. Down there, we witness Ren's plan. She thinks Komi's under will be reflected in the puddle. Najimi tries to block her view, and then a strong gust of wind blows. However, Komi holds her skirt down. As a last resort, Ren pretends to fall into the puddle and takes many photos. Upon reviewing the pictures, she notices a smudge on the camera that ruins the shot. Ren gets upset, but her mood quickly improves when she sees Komi gazing at a rainbow. Two days later, everything returns to normal, and the simp trio starts fantasizing about the girls and wonders what their perfect dates would be like. First, they plan a date with Najimi, a reference to Boku no Pika with ice cream. Then, they consider Agari due to her prominent and Akako envisions a beautiful Sunday. Nakanaka is seen as the gamer girl. However, when it's time to think about Komi, they can't come up with anything because they feel unworthy. Tadano, however, envisions a scenario with Komi wearing an apron, sharing a meal, and helping in the kitchen, which excites him in the wrong way. Another day, Komi watches a TV show about cat cafes, and in class, she tells her friends about it. Najimi suggests they go, but since Najimi is allergic to cats, Komi invites someone else like Nene, who accepts. In the afternoon, they run into Atori. At the cat cafe, Komi tries to pick up the cats, but they avoid her, while Atori is swarmed by the cats, making Komi jealous. The head cat, Chocolate, who doesn't like being touched, looks at Komi with a hint of pity. Komi couldn't pet any of the cats, but Chocolate becomes interested in her and approaches to be petted. Nene takes a photo of Komi with a cat and sends it to Tadano, who regrets not going, as he had told Komi he didn't have time to socialize with others. On another day, Ren initiates the I Love You game with Komi. 
In this game, someone has to say I love you to the other person's face, and if they react by laughing or blushing, they lose. As expected, Komi remains unflustered. Suddenly, Najimi arrives and says I love you to Komi in a super deep and seductive voice, but Komi shows no reaction. They try again, but Komi remains unfazed. Najimi brings out their secret weapon, Tadano who becomes very nervous but has to participate to avoid suspicion. However, as soon as he says I, he blushes deeply. Fortunately, the game ends and Komi leaves the classroom blushing, wishing she could have heard those words from Tedano. The next day, Nakanaka and Ren want to learn how Tedano can understand what Komi is thinking. They ask him to teach them, and he tries to make them write down what they think Komi is thinking in various scenarios. However, they get it very wrong. Ren always believes that Komi wants to see her or something similar, and Nakanaka thinks as if she's the one being analyzed. This quickly turns into a fight between the two for Komi's friendship. Just then, Komi herself appears and asks them why they were staring at her so much. Both of them get frightened, thinking they've bothered Komi, but Tadano confirms that they didn't. He suggests that they all go to a cafe instead. Komi agrees, and she seems calm about it, so they head off for a nice coffee. Meanwhile, he imagines being with Atori who comforts him when he's stressed from work. They then transport themselves to an ancient era where Komi, dressed in a kimono, defends her husband from villains. Their daydreaming continues, but as soon as Komi enters the classroom, everyone backs away, keeping their fantasies secret from the girls. It's another day at school, and Komi's stomach rumbles. Suddenly, Katai arrives with something to say. The intense gaze of their teacher makes Katai nervous, and he has a million thoughts running through his mind. Despite the pressure, he manages to say, shall we go for a walk? Everyone in the classroom looks at him strangely, and he leaves the classroom defeated. However, Tadano understands him and follows him for lunch. When Katai sees Tadano behind him, he becomes very happy. Once in the cafeteria, he believes that Komi sent Tadano for a test, thinking that she wants them to be great friends. Katai tries to feed Tadano, but when he sees that Komi is watching, he hesitates nervously. He asks if he wants more, and he sits next to him, grabbing his shoulder while trembling. This makes Tadano feel awkward, and he moves away. Komi thinks Katai wants to hit her, and both of them are confused. Tadano then tells Katai that he doesn't have to force himself and doesn't need to act tougher on Komi. Katai is relieved, and suddenly, Komi's stomach rumbles, making Tadano realize that she must be hungry. Komi decides to introduce Tadano to Katai who was there for lunch. She starts introducing her friends, and when she was about to say that they were all the same, Najimi appears and covers her mouth, telling her that it's more fun this way. After a while, Najimi suggests to Komi that she should make Katai write his name in her notebook. Katai complies, thinking that all those names are Komi's underlings. That night, Komi hears the sweet potato seller, prompting her father to give her money to go and buy some. Despite the challenge of not speaking, she manages to make the purchase. Perhaps, she follows the seller closely to ensure she gets the right change. Meanwhile, Tadano, in his home, reflects on the day when everyone saw him dressed as a woman, feeling thoroughly embarrassed. Suddenly, he recalls that he even danced with Komi, and the embarrassment intensifies, making so much noise that his sister assumes he's engaging in typical boy stuff. He steps out to clear his mind. On his way, Tadano and Komi bump into each other. Seeing that it's late and Komi is alone, Tadano offers to accompany her, but she declines. Tadano contemplates asking her out for the holidays but struggles to muster the courage, so he leaves. However, Komi stops him, offering a sweet potato, and Tadano finally manages to ask her to go out during those days, to which Komi agrees. Afterward, they each go their separate ways. It's December 24th, and Komi doesn't have any plans for Christmas. However, Najimi calls her and shares the exciting news that everyone will be gathering at her house to celebrate Christmas. With a brief goodbye, Najimi hangs up, prompting Komi to get ready to buy gifts for everyone. She brings her brother, Shausuk, along for the shopping excursion. While browsing through various items like candles, a vase, and a Santa Claus decoration, Shausuk initially wants to leave but eventually returns to his sister's side. He suggests buying scarves, and after finding one she likes, Komi signals to Shausuk that she wants him to pay for it. He runs off to complete the purchase, ultimately buying the scarf since Komi can't speak. On December 25th, Najimi arrives with all their friends, extending warm wishes for a Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday to Komi. Komi corrects them, noting her birthday is on the 26th, but everyone assures her not to worry. They present her with a birthday gift, a giant stuffed cat. 
As everyone enters her house, Komi stays outside, hugging her plush toy. Tadano suggests she thank everyone by email later, and Komi nods in agreement. Inside, some have already taken their seats, while others observe Komi's movements, vying for a spot close to her. The one who sits closest to her will be deemed the one who values Komi the most. Overwhelmed by the presence of so many friends, Komi's mom intervenes, instructing everyone to bring snacks. The simps, after planning strategies and setting rules, leave a free space for her to sit. Eventually, she decides to sit next to Tadano, and to everyone's surprise, Najimi sits on Tadano's lap. They dive into a session of Smash Bros and enjoy some pizza. Soon, Ren suggests playing the king game, a classic where participants draw sticks marked with numbers or the word king. The king randomly selects a number, and the person with the corresponding number must carry out a request. Ren, with some persuasive skills, convinces Mono to draw Komi's number. As a result, Komi is tasked with exchanging email addresses. As the numbers rotate, it's now Najimi's turn. Once again, Najimi selects Komi, but this time, the request is for Komi to put on a Santa Claus costume, a whimsical request that Komi happily fulfills. When it's Tadano's turn, he asks Nene for a massage, and taking a bit too much time, leaves her request unclear. The turn of events continues with Makaru becoming the king. She becomes the target of Shija's teasing and requests that everyone refers to her as a loser. Agari follows, expressing her desire to be treated like a dog. Nakanaka makes a mistake, accidentally looking at Ren's number and confusing 9 for 6, coincidentally landing on Tadano's number. Shuko, Komi's mother, becomes the next king, and she throws a surprising twist into the game. She requests two of them to kiss, leading to Tadano sharing a cheek kiss with Mono, much to the ninja's unexpected blushing. Finally, it's Komi's turn to be the king. Her simple request echoes the warmth of the evening as she asks everyone to continue being friends. We return to December 24th, where Tadano was contemplating the day he asked Komi out. It's the next day, and he invites Najimi, who, in turn, invites everyone to join them at the mall. Upon arrival, they encounter Ren, who had arrived earlier. Najimi suggests a game to find the best gift for Komi. After showcasing various gifts of different prices and varieties, Tadano suggests pooling funds for a big stuffed cat as a Christmas gift for Komi, who loves cats. They aim to keep expenses low, considering they also need another gift. They agree to this plan, mindful of Komi's humility and preference for modest presents. Fast forward to that moment when they all came to congratulate Komi on her birthday, even though they got the date wrong. They gifted her the large cat, and the celebration turned out to be fantastic. As they all departed for their homes, Komi sent them a thank you message via email. The boys mentioned that they would like to do the same next year, cherishing the joy they shared in making Komi's day special. One more day, and it's snowing. Komi looks out her window and sees someone calling her. Then, around 3 in the morning, Najimi wakes up and notices it's snowing too. They wake up their friend Tadano at 5 in the morning, and they all go for a walk. Tadano makes a small snowman, but Najimi wants to build a giant one. So, they start making it, and Komi gathers everything to make the snowman look impressive. In the end, it's a fantastic snowman, and she takes around 50 photos of it for Instagram. Shuko informs them that there's hot pot, and they all go inside to eat. Komi stays outside making a small snowman. Later, they come out, and everyone has a serving of hot pot in small bowls. Soon enough, they engage in a snowball fight. Komi joins some middle school boys as Najimi is teasing her. First, Aki falls on Komi's side, but when they realize she can't throw far because she's afraid of hurting someone, they let her go. The next to fall is Seiko, and the boys ask Komi for help. However, her throws are quite short. Suddenly, they hit Lola, the girl that one of the boys likes, to win. They target Komi, but she manages to eliminate Agari and Makaru before Ren, the last one, decides to let Komi win. Komi is the victor. On a different day, Komi visits her grandmother to run and play cards with Akira. The card game they play is very Japanese and challenging to understand. When they arrive at the temple, people admire Komi's beauty. She participates in an offering and pays her respects. The grandmother asks Komi if her wish came true, and Komi says yes. Later, they go to the temple's office where they meet Inaka, the temple worker who happens to be Komi's friend. Inaka starts explaining everything to Komi, and then she realizes that Komi is her friend. Komi is nervous when a customer arrives, and Inaka helps her out, teaching her how to do the job. Later, the priest thanks them for their work, and Komi thanks Inaka. An interesting fact is that Komi now gets along well with the elementary school boys who admire her for her excellent performance in the snowball fight. 
On January 2nd, Tadana wakes up to find Najimi having breakfast at his house after spending the night there. Najimi expresses a desire to visit the shrine with everyone, so Tadano starts calling them to organize the outing. He begins with Komi, who initially appears to answer the phone but just talks to the answering machine. Next, they call Ren, who is in Hawaii on the beach but instantly decides to join upon hearing that Komi will be there. Nakanaka is in the middle of an important event in her online game but also agrees to come. Makaru is busy training intensively to challenge Komi, and Nene is taking care of her younger siblings. Atori was watching a Christmas bonfire on TV. Katai is in the middle of a training session and seems distracted. Inaka is in the countryside with no cell signal. Chika is busy training people, and the simps are at McDonald's. Finally, Tadano hesitates but realizes that Komi has already called him, and Najimi answers, telling Tadano about their strategy. Everyone gathers at the shrine to check their fortunes. All of them receive bad luck except Komi, who keeps her fortune to herself. The following day, Katai discovers there will be ice skating and invites Tadano, who agrees and asks if he can bring someone else, initially wanting it to be just the two of them. Katai eventually agrees to Tadano bringing someone along. On the ice, Katai and Komi seem wary of each other, both being inexperienced skaters. Tadano takes it upon himself to teach them, starting with holding onto the wall. However, Komi suddenly lets go, prompting Tadano to rush over and hold her hand to teach her how to break. They end up very close, feeling embarrassed, and Tadano leaves them to practice. Meanwhile, Katai is also trying to navigate the ice with Tadano's guidance. The next day, Tadano falls ill after spending an extended time on the ice. With his mom and Hitomi out, he's alone and unwell, unable even to stand up. Seeking help, he calls Najimi, but there's a mix-up, and Najimi mistakenly thinks Komi is with Tadano. Eventually, Najimi arrives, and when Tadano opens the door, he finds Komi in his house. She takes care of him, prepares tea, and cooks soup. Tadano attempts to take the soup from her, but he ends up letting her feed him. After they clean up, Komi enters Tadano's room and finds him asleep. She holds his hand just as Najimi arrives, causing Komi to start shaking and denying her presence. Later that day, when Hitomi returns, she senses a girl's presence by the lingering scent in the air. The next day, Komi tried to write a letter to Najimi to clear up some misunderstandings. However, she found it challenging, fearing it might make her come off as dishonest. The following day at school, she finally finished the letter and attempted to put it in Najimi's locker. But as she was doing so, Najimi unexpectedly arrived and tore up the letter, thinking it was a love confession from Komi. Tadano appeared behind them, and Komi felt nervous. Despite Tadano having recovered from his illness that morning, his mind is cloudy and he can't recall if Komi had visited his house. He needed to ask Najimi about shared expenses since they often paid for things together. When he arrived at school, he saw Mimi chasing after Komi's letter, so he couldn't ask then. Komi felt a bit embarrassed without specifying why. While walking together, Tadano asked Komi what she did after that incident. Komi thought he meant the moment she held his hand while running away. Tadano later asked Mimi about Komi's actions the previous day, and Najimi mentioned that Komi had only taken his pulse. In the bathroom, Komi thought Tadano had noticed her holding his hand. The story then introduces two new characters, Shisudo and Komitani, who seems to be a commentator in many chapters. Shisudo, being remarkably good-looking, surprises, he think why Komi hasn't talked to him yet. Shisudo decides to approach Komi, but a group of Komi's simps, overprotective fans, prevent him from getting close to her. He tries again, but even Ren intervenes. Feeling unwell, Shisudo goes to the restroom and accidentally drops his handkerchief, which Komi picks up. Nas, who is still feeling unwell, believes that Komi is in love with him. So, Shisudo gathers the courage to ask for her phone number. The next day, Komi is unsure how to react when she shoves his phone in her face. Komitani, realizing that things are getting awkward, pretends that he intended to ask Tadano for his number all along. As a result, they exchange numbers, and it's announced that Tadano has a new friend who sends daily selfies. Another day begins, and the teacher announces the formation of groups for an upcoming trip to Kyoto. After school, Najimi and Tadano express their excitement about the Kyoto trip, but Komi appears distracted and eventually leaves. On the way home, Tadano inquires about Komi's middle school trip, and she claims to have also gone to Kyoto. Tadano, looking forward to the trip, notices that Komi doesn't share the same level of excitement, encouraging her to open up. Tadano assures her that she can trust him. They part ways, and Tadano receives a call from Komi. 
During the call, Komi confesses that she lied about going to Kyoto in middle school due to having no friends to form a group with. The ones left without a group included her, but she didn't feel certain if they truly accepted her. She felt like a burden, and the trip wasn't a genuine experience for her. Tadano reassures her, emphasizing that she now has friends, and such concerns are behind her. However, Komi remains skeptical, thinking that others might have better friends. Tadano reminds her that she has him and Najimi. Komi mentions the gender-based group separation, making it not an option. Willing to support Komi, Tadano suggests he won't go on the trip either. Komi replies, No, I know how much you want to go on this trip. Tadano, thinking he might have upset her, is relieved when Komi responds, indicating that she understood and is looking forward to the trip. The next day, everyone is eager to be in Komi's group until the teacher announces that groups will be chosen by lottery. The next day, we find Komi up and ready at 5 in the morning, beaming with joy as she had finished her preparations. She headed to the meeting point where everyone was gathering, and they would be picked up by a train entirely reserved for their class. Once inside, Najimi swiftly fell asleep, leaving Tadano in charge of taking attendance. The groups of Ren, Agari, and Nakanaka were engaged in a playful quarrel over who gets to see Komi, with Agari stuck in the middle. Nene, Inaka, and Atori formed a harmonious trio, with the girls noticing Inaka's unique countryside accent. Nakaru, Amami, and Aiko were engrossed in a card game the inseparable trio of Chairai, Mano, and Sonoda, a group of self-proclaimed Odakas. Tadano was accompanied by Shisudo and Katai, who would share the same room for the night. Komi, Makuni, and Sasaki, Katu Makuni, a girl with brown hair and glasses, and Sasaki Ayami, a short brown-haired girl. Despite Sasaki quickly breaking the ice by offering sweets and a sense of camaraderie forming among the group, Komi still felt a bit excluded. Upon arriving in Kyoto, they disembarked the train and boarded a bus. On the bus, they were greeted by a lively guide who, although enthusiastic, accidentally bit her tongue due to nervousness. Despite her attempts to share insights at the first stop, Najimi's antics, like boldly asking if she had a boyfriend, stole the spotlight. The next stop was a temple, where the guide tried her best to share insights, even discussing some mysterious rocks. Unfortunately, the students remained more captivated by Komi than her words. They later visited the temple itself, and this time, the guide managed to capture their attention by quoting an anime. In the meantime, they asked Shisudo to take a photo, believing he was a celebrity, much to his confusion. Moving to another temple, this time, no one paid attention to the guide. Nakanaka had purchased a wooden sword and some traditional clothing. The guide attempted to explain the local culture but was met with disinterest once more. Upon returning to the bus, the guide felt somewhat disheartened as the students continued playing, paying little heed to her explanations. The only two individuals genuinely interested were Tadano and Komi, who listened intently. This made the guide feel a bit better and she suggested they return someday. Their journey then took them to another temple, followed by a visit to a waterfall where Ren took a sip of water, believing it would bring good fortune and love. At this point, Tadano and Komi were found admiring a building that Tadano claimed was constructed without the use of nails. Realizing Komi was standing next to him, he asked if she had heard his explanation. Taken by surprise, Komi said, I like it too, causing both of them to blush. At last, the students arrived at their inn for the night, where separate rooms were designated for boys and girls. However, due to a mix-up, Najimi, mistaken for a girl, ended up with the girls. After a satisfying dinner, the teacher invited the girls for a bath, igniting Ren's imaginative musings about Komi. Najimi led the way to the bath, and soon it was the girls' turn to prepare. Ren observed from a distance as the girls hesitated for about five minutes, prompting Nene to appear and hurry them along. Agari also joined the group, receiving compliments from Nene that boosted her self-esteem. Finally, Komi and Nene entered the bath together, with Ren discreetly watching. Komi started by showering and looking into the mirror. Ren, in a mischievous mood, made an unusual request to touch Komi's you-know-what. However, her mischievous expression turned into one of pure admiration at Komi's innocent reaction. Shifting focus to the boys on their first night at the inn, emotions varied from calm to nervous, with some feeling a bit uneasy about Katai. In a peculiar scene at the communal bath, Katai confidently flaunted his well-defined abs, leaving the others in awe. After leaving the bath, Katai engaged in an interesting conversation with Shisudo, who admired Katai's physique and invited him to pose for pictures, turning posing into an art form. 
other delinquent students observed and decided to join in, creating their own unique poses, with Tadano playing the role of photographer. Komi, passing by, observed the unusual spectacle, feeling somewhat out of place in the lively atmosphere. Approaching bedtime, Najimi mischievously snuck into the girls' dormitory, proposing a playful pillow fight. The idea caught on, and soon everyone was gearing up for the showdown. Initially hesitant, Komi received a pillow to the face from Najimi and was encouraged to join. As the chaos unfolded, Komi found herself in the midst of the fun. The final battle unfolded between Najimi and Ren, leading to an intense and thrilling pillow fight. In the end, Najimi emerged victorious. Afterward, the teacher assumed they had all fallen asleep, leaving the students to chat and giggle in the dark. Komi couldn't sleep, her mind buzzing with excitement about the experiences of the trip and those yet to come. The second day began with the teacher granting the boys a day off. Mikuni, taking the lead, revealed her plans for the day, and all the girls agreed to follow. Their first destination, an hour away by train, prompted a conversation about hobbies. The girl accompanying them shared her passion for yo-yos and dreams of becoming a professional player. Sasaki, feeling a bit embarrassed, admitted she didn't have a specific hobby. When Komi was questioned, she simply stated her preference for relaxation. Upon reaching their destination, the group found themselves at an amusement park with three special passes to skip the long lines, ensuring a fun-filled and carefree day for everyone. After exploring all the attractions at the amusement park, the group headed to a takoyaki place about 40 minutes away. They purchased some pastries to enjoy on the way, but soon realized that eating while walking was frowned upon in Japan. Consequently, they had to consume their snacks on the spot, which took longer than expected. Following their visit to the park and takoyaki stop, they embarked on an hour-long journey to an open-air nature reserve. Here, Komi shared a piece of bread with one of the deer, creating a touching moment that captured the hearts of the girls. Unfortunately, they spent too much time feeding the deer, resulting in a frantic dash to catch their train. On board, the girls discussed the tight schedule, acknowledging that they had fallen behind due to the food delays. To ease tensions, Komi took photos of everyone and shared them, bringing laughter and reconciliation. Sasaki mentioned that there was one more place to visit, and Komi suggested they run to it. The girls swiftly complied. Upon reaching their destination, Komi transformed into a geisha, drawing admiration from her friends. Suddenly, individuals who appeared to be ninjas emerged, stating that they needed to capture Komi. At this location, visitors could participate in mock battles. Sasaki, who had returned from the restroom, was confused and believed Komi was being harassed. He spotted masks in Shisudo's pocket and decided to wear one while confronting the boys with his yo-yo skills. His impressive yo-yo performance, including building the Eiffel Tower, intimidated the boys and ended their teasing. Mikuni, in particular, was captivated by Sasaki's performance. When Sasaki learned of this, she pretended not to hear, but later she reappeared in a different outfit. It seemed like Sasaki had genuinely believed her own lie. She entered the restroom overwhelmed by the situation, reflecting on past experiences where others had teased her for playing with a yo-yo. However, now she had friends who accepted her as she was, so she decided not to hide it any longer. She confidently emerged with her yo-yo and mask, making an epic entrance that her friends appreciated. After this, the girls engaged in lively chatter about various topics, including their love interests. As the time to turn off the lights and delve into romantic discussions approached, Mikuni inquired about Sasaki's relationship status. Sasaki, responding in the negative, shared that she had no interesting romantic stories to tell. Mikuni, hesitating initially, managed to reveal her feelings for Katai by mentioning his name with some difficulty. Encouraged by her friends, Komi avoided directly answering the question about her crush. Prompted by her friends to at least write the first letter of her crush's name, Komi blushed and wrote H for Hidohito Tadano. As the day of departure arrived and the train was ready, Nakanaka unintentionally left her bamboo sword behind, creating a humorous Chunabio-style scene. Once on the train, the girls enjoyed the Kyoto sweets they had brought with them, engaging in animated conversation. Exhausted from the past two days, Komi eventually drifted off to sleep. During the journey, Sasaki shared with Mikuni her realization that Komi had more imperfections than initially thought. Komi wasn't the flawless, pretty girl Sasaki had imagined. She was more like the rest of them. Amid laughter, Sasaki playfully suggested pranking Tadano by pretending something was wrong with Komi, prompting him to check on her. However, things took an unexpected turn when Sasaki spotted Mikuni sitting next to Cat Eye. Initially heading towards Komi, Tadano adjusted his course upon realizing her seat was taken, returning to Komi's side. 
She soon fell asleep with her head on his shoulder. Upon waking up, Komi found Tadano beside her, tapping his shoulder to feel the warmth her head had left. Apologizing for the inconvenience, Komi learned that she had only dozed off for two or three minutes. Tadano initiated a conversation, asking about her trip, and Komi eagerly shared the photos she had taken. Intrigued by the pictures, he requested a viewing, leading to an enjoyable moment for the three friends. As they eventually returned to their seats, Komi playfully pointed out her friend's log humorously noting that she now only needed 79 more friends. Back at school, Komi is eager to express her gratitude to everyone for the memorable trip, but she finds herself unable to do so. Nakanaka and Agari are the first to appear, with Nakanaka giving sub-novels to Agari. Suddenly, Ren passes by and teases Nakanaka about the bamboo sword incident. Meanwhile, Atori and Nene admire a beautiful painting that Inaka created using the photos from the trip. Katai also joins the scene, intending to say good morning to everyone. He encounters Tadano, the delinquents, and Shisudo, realizing how happy he is to have so many friends. As Komi watches the interactions, she goes through three stages of emotions, normal Komi, vengeful Komi, and YOLO Komi. However, she realizes she can't even move and stands there in frustration. Observing her struggle, Tadano decides to give her a little nudge, not too strong, just enough to encourage her to move. As they approach Makuni, she inevitably says good morning to him, and Komi follows suit. The others find it amusing, considering she communicates through a notebook. Sasaki also decides to join and greet the girls. Some days later, Nene and Komi are having a conversation. Nene asks Komi about her plans for Valentine's Day, and Komi admits she hasn't decided yet. Nene then extends an invitation for Komi and Atori to join her at her house to make chocolates. However, she explicitly tells Tadano that it's going to be a girl's day, excluding him. Upon arriving at Nene's house, they are greeted by a lively bunch of siblings. The children immediately surround, leaving Komi standing calmly but unsure of how to react. One of the mischievous siblings playfully pats Komi on the backside before darting away. Nene requests understanding from Komi regarding her brother's antics. In the kitchen, the girls organize themselves to make chocolates. Tasks are assigned. Komi takes charge of melting chocolate and butter while Atori handles the sifting of flour and cocoa. Meanwhile, Nene's brother continues his playful lurking. Nene eventually manages to send her siblings away with a clear instruction not to bother the girls. As the baking preparations continue, Atori's pace prompts Nene's little siblings to rush over and assist with the cream. Komi, following Nene's instructions, joins them. Komi's impressive and efficient whisking leaves the children astonished, referring to her as the terrifying girl with amazement. With the cream finished, they proceed to the baking stage. Nene's siblings suggest a baking time of 50 minutes and then usher Komi and Atori to join them in play. During the playful interaction, one of the children curiously asks Komi about her silence, and another sibling explains that she's shy when it comes to speaking. Komi demonstrates that she can say awe. The conversation turns to Valentine's Day, and the children learn that, in Japan, it's customary for girls to give chocolates on February 14th, representing love and gratitude. Komi and Tadano seem a bit embarrassed. Komi is on a mission to find Tadano's locker, but when she hears someone approaching, she hastily retreats. Tadano notices her leaving and checks his locker to see if she left anything but there's nothing there. Heading to class, he greets Komi, who barely acknowledges the greeting while looking at him. He also check his desk but find nothing. Suddenly, Najimi arrives and hands Komi a 10-cent chocolate, making her very happy. Najimi also gives Komi a bag of cookies, thinking, great, by giving her this junk, I've received some chocolates in return. Ren follows, giving Komi chocolates with exaggerated facial expressions. When Komi is about to eat one, Ren eagerly watches, hoping to see her savor it. Komi immediately hands Ren a bag of chocolates in return, and Ren, overwhelmed, faints. Meanwhile, Nakanaka overhears all the commotion and thinks everyone is crazy for celebrating a day like this. Unbeknownst to Nakanaka, Komi is quietly giving chocolates to everyone in the class. Just then, Katai enters the classroom, not entirely sure how Valentine's Day works. To be safe, he bought chocolates for Tedano. Additionally, Mono receives imaginary fried bread from Inaka, but to their dismay it's just their imagination. Sasaki gives chocolates to Katai and returns to see a scene where she's pushing Mikuni. Feeling the pressure from her friends, Mikuni gives chocolates to her crush, Katai. Unsure about what's inside the box, Katai simply says, okay. Komi also gives Katai a chocolate, but Katai doesn't quite understand what's going on. Meanwhile, Tadana watches this scene and feels a twinge of jealousy because Komi didn't give him anything. After school, they'll be receiving friendship chocolates from Katai. 
Tadano reassures he'll give her one on White Day, celebrated on March 14th, where boys give chocolates to girls. However, at the moment, he doesn't have anything to give. On their way out, Tadano goes to his locker to check once again, but he doesn't find anything, except a stone inside. Deep down, he knew that no one would give him chocolates. When he gets home, he starts to feel defeated because he's the only one who didn't receive a single chocolate. Hitomi sees her brother defeated at the door and realizes what's going on. Tadano falls to his knees in despair, and his mother, who happens to be passing by, tells Tadano that she'll give him chocolates. However, chocolates from his mother don't count either. After all, Tadano goes to his bed, and Hitomi tries to cheer him up, telling him he received chocolates from his mother and his friend. As it's time for dinner, a shadow suddenly appears by the curtain. Hitomi gets an idea and asks her brother to buy ice cream because she thought it was that boy who would come by. Tadano gets ready and goes out to buy it, accidentally bumping into someone while opening the door. It turns out to be Komi, which surprises Tadano. His mother asks him to buy something as well, calling him Hito. They arrive at the park with swings, and Tadano apologizes to Komi for the door slam. Both lower their heads, and Komi hands him a paper. It's a committee meeting that Najimi assigned to her. Komi stands up, leaves, and Tadano waves goodbye, feeling somewhat sad. However, as they both walk away, Tadano reflects on the fact that Komi didn't give him anything, possibly because she had high expectations. He wonders if Komi hates him. Komi can't take it anymore, turns around, and yells at Tadano. He goes down to see what she wants. Komi slowly takes something out of her bag's pocket, and it's chocolates she made for him. She tells him these are friend chocolates. Tadano, very embarrassed, says, oh yeah, of course they are, and accepts them. He admits that he had lost hope of receiving anything and had resigned himself to getting nothing. Receiving chocolates at the end makes him very happy. Komi, overwhelmed with embarrassment, tells him that those chocolates were the best from the bunch. To thank Tadano, and she, unable to bear it any longer, runs away. Even though it's getting late, she leaves by herself. The next day, Komi found herself in her room, replaying the events of the previous day in her mind, which left her feeling quite embarrassed. Komi's mother entered and questioned why she wasn't ready for school yet. Anxious and unsure if something had happened, Komi resisted getting up until the end. However, Shuko informed her that skipping school today would ruin her attendance record, prompting Komi to immediately get up. At school, Nene thanked Komi for the chocolate she received, and Komi expressed her gratitude in return. Nene assumed Komi received a lot of chocolates and advised her not to eat them all to avoid gaining weight. As Komi approached the classroom, she hesitated upon seeing Tadano, still feeling the embarrassment from the previous day. Despite this, with her friends arriving, she had no choice but to enter. Tadano greeted Komi, who looked at him the same way she did on the first day, making Tadano nervous. Komi maintained that expression, puzzling Tadano, who usually understood Komi's thoughts but felt unsure when it came to matters of love. Tadano mentioned that the chocolate was delicious, prompting Komi to abruptly stand up and run away. On a normal day, Komi wears stockings as always. Ren notices Komi's stockings, and as Komi gets up to go to the blackboard, Ren discovers a hole in her stockings. Feeling the urge to fix it, Ren has thoughts of tearing Komi's stockings to shreds but refrains. Ren finally can't bear it and whispers in Komi's ear that her stockings are ripped. However, Ren always carries spare stockings to match her measurements so she calmly heads to the bathroom to change. Ren apologizes for not informing her earlier, as she assumed Komi would be embarrassed in front of others. Inside the bathroom, Komi thanks Ren and changes her stockings. Ren cries and appreciates Komi's kindness. Tadano, who had noticed the situation, watches Komi from a distance. Now we move on to Onigashima Akako, a girl known to Komi and a member of Ren's group. She's always cheerful and well-liked by everyone. Tadano greets her, but Akako seems upset. Her short temper is her biggest flaw, and she gets annoyed easily. She vents her frustration about multiple red traffic lights, bumps into people who block her way, encounters more red lights, and even her earphones become tangled. Finally, the lights turn green, but her shoelaces become untied repeatedly, causing her to lose her patience. After the troublesome journey to school, Tadano happily greets Akako, thinking that his friendly demeanor can calm her down. However, when he passes by her, she doesn't even acknowledge him. Tadano tries to ask why she ignored him, and Ren explains that when Akako is angry, she can do anything, which is why she didn't speak to him. Tadano watches Akako as she gets irritated with various things during the school day, causing her demon meter to gradually increase. Later, during lunch, Akako's juice spills, causing her to explode with frustration. 
her friends quickly retreat, and Akako rushes to the restroom to clean her shirt. Tomi, who is in the restroom, catches Akako's earphones that nearly fell to the water. Akako expresses her gratitude, and Komi can't resist helping her further by untangling the earphones and neatly coiling them. Overwhelmed with emotion, Akako asks Komi to go to the batting center with her, and Komi is left uncertain about how to react. Consequently, Komi ends up accompanying her along with the others, and by the end of the day, Akako becomes friends with Komi. On a new day, we encounter another girl, Sadu Amami, a short gray-haired student. Amami is known for her polite and kind nature, often being the first to arrive at school and take on cleaning duties. However, her tendency to agree to everything, sometimes even before a request is made, raises concerns that people might be taking advantage of her. During lunch, one of her friends advises her to be less accommodating to avoid being exploited by others, highlighting the risk of people taking advantage of her kindness. Realizing the need to set boundaries, Amami attempts to strike a balance. At the end of the day, as she approaches the classroom, Amami spots Tadano carrying a stack of papers. Offering to help, she takes the papers from his hands, asserting that she can manage. Observing the situation, Komi steps in to assist, and together they handle the task, joined by Najimi. Later, Tadano and Komi seem upset and avoid eye contact. Najimi notices their strange behavior, questioning since when they are so close to having arguments. Several days have passed, and it's now March, signaling the approach of White Day. Hitomi catches her brother nearly sniffing the bag that Komi gave him when she opens the door. Tadano, uncertain about the meaning behind different types of chocolates as gifts, searches online. According to his findings, sweet chocolate means I like you, without marshmallows means I don't like you and cookies mean just friends. Unsure, he decides to discuss it with Hitomi. Hitomi starts by asking him about the type of chocolate he received and whether it symbolizes friendship or something more. Tadano mentions that he thinks it was just friendship. Hitomi suggests the possibility that she might be pretending it's just friendship, making Tadano anxious. She continues by saying that if it's just friendship chocolate, the specific type doesn't matter. However, if it's love chocolate, he'll need to do something about it. Though Tadano doesn't deny it, when asked again if he likes her, he hesitantly admits, well, I guess you could say that I do. His sister then urges him to go to the store with her to buy something, having found good options online. Fast forward to Friday the 13th of March, a day before White Day, with no classes on Saturday. As expected, Komi is the first to receive chocolates from her regular friends. Ren predictably arrives, pushing her friends aside to present Komi with a candy sculpture of herself. Katai follows, leaving a small bag on Makuni's desk and quickly leaving. Makuni is thrilled, but Katai is overly anxious. The next gift is for their teacher, Komi, who receives a muscle-toning notebook from Katai. Komi looks at it strangely, saying, this is my gift, reacts nervously, ignoring Komi due to his anxiety, and fails to give the gift. Upon hearing what Komi said, Katai becomes thrilled about the upcoming date with Tadano. After avoiding Komi, Tadano departs with Katai, Shisudo, and Komitani. It's the 14th of March, White Day, and Tadano has to go and give his gift to Komi. Nervous, he encounters his sister Hitomi, who teases him. When he arrives at Komi's house, he hesitates at the door, contemplating whether to ring the bell or not. After some inner turmoil, he decides to ring the bell without overthinking it. A man's voice answers the door, asking who it is. A while later, Komi's mother comes out and informs Tadano that her daughter is at the market, and will be back soon, so he can wait inside. She leads him to Komi's room, leaving him waiting there, which only intensifies his nervousness. Suddenly, someone opens the door and it's Komi's dad who brings him some tea, Tadano, not knowing what to do, sits next to him. Thankfully, Komi arrives and sees her dad sitting with Tadano. She ushers him out of there, somewhat embarrassed, closes the door to prevent her dad from re-entering, and quickly tidies up her room. Alone with Komi, Tadano finally takes a deep breath, breaking the initial tension as they share a brief moment. However, Komi's nerves return as she realizes it's white day. Awkwardly, Tadano expresses his gratitude for the chocolates and hands Komi a bag with his gift. Upon opening it, she discovers hand cream, and her expression becomes adorably cute. Tadano mentions that the cream smells nice, and he hopes she likes it. Komi nods appreciatively, but then her attention shifts to the chocolate message he wrote, indicating I like you. A wave of nervousness sweeps through everyone in the room as Komi seems to grasp its meaning. Tadano, feeling the tension, quickly excuses himself, leaving Komi to return to her house. She closes the door and opens the hand cream, finally applying it while remarking on its pleasant scent. As the school day concludes, Komi appears somewhat contemplative in the background. 
Najimi, playing with an eraser, suggests they all join in the fun. They initiate a game where they customize their erasers and attempt to dislodge each other's erasers from the table. The atmosphere becomes competitive, and Tadano enthusiastically participates with an eraser that adheres to the table. Komi, initiating the game, accidentally nudges Najimi and Tadano's erasers. Suddenly, Nakanaka decides to join, and Ren expresses interest, turning it into an intense eraser battle involving everyone. In the end, Komi emerges victorious by dislodging the eraser with a suction cup. Following the game, the friends bid their farewells to Komi one by one. Tadano approaches Komi, who appears somewhat melancholic as the graduation ceremony draws near. Komi is concerned about the prospect of losing the friends she has made. Tadano, sensing her unease, is unsure of what to say to console her, creating a poignant moment. Komi attempts to conceal her sadness as they stand in silence, observing the rain falling. As the rain intensifies, Tadano realizes he doesn't have an umbrella. Undeterred, they walk away together, finding solace in their shared bond. Despite the downpour, Tadano and Komi continue walking, exchanging glances. Tadano accompanies Komi to her house, mirroring the scene from their first meeting. In a nostalgic tone, he says to Komi, another year, it's been a pleasure, and they share a brief exchange hinting at the prospect of being in the same class again. And that's where this video end, watch the next one and take care.